Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Euland. For more information, go to bobeuland.com slash Coco's 2D. This tutorial is called Understanding Arrays. The importance of arrays. A program consists of procedures and data. When it comes to procedures, the atoms are simple statements. We can combine several statements into an aggregate using the concept of function. Similarly, when it comes to data, the atoms are primitive data and primitive objects. We can combine several data atoms into an aggregate using the concept of array. So, you could say that arrays are to the data side what functions are to the procedure side. That's how important the arrays are. There are two types of arrays that you can use. The first type is C arrays. If you have a background in C programming, this type of arrays are familiar to you. The elements inside C arrays can be of primitive data types like integers, characters and so on. But the disadvantage of C arrays is that you will have trouble down the road. The other type is objective C arrays. They will save you from trouble down the road. They contain many convenient methods that you will not want to be without once you get to know them. The disadvantage is that these types of arrays might be unfamiliar to you and also that elements must be objects. So, if you want to put primitive data types into these arrays, you must first wrap those data into objects. Here are some examples of primitive data types. Integers, floats, characters, rectangles, points, sizes, structures, and so on. Inside iOS, there are functions that turn many of these primitive data types into objects. For instance, there are many functions that turn primitive data types into strings. For instance, there are functions that will transform a rectangle or a point to a string. There are also special classes like NSValue and NSData that can be used for more general object wrapping. There are two types of Objective-C arrays. NS arrays which are not changeable during the execution and NS mutable array that are changeable during the execution. As we will see, both types of arrays are usable. Let's go to Xcode and see how to use Objective-C arrays. We are inside Xcode and our task is to make a chessboard. And our plan is to use the classes NSArray and NSMutableArray. Let's look at them in the documentation. First, look at NSArray class reference, NSArray and its subclass NS Mutable Array manage ordered collection of objects. Observe that the only elements you can put in an array are objects. Let's look at the methods in the tasks section. To create an array, we use the class method array with objects. You provide a comma separated list of objects, ending with nil, and this method returns an array containing those objects. The method object at index 
takes an index as input and returns the object at that index. The method subarray with range takes a NS range as input and returns a new array containing the objects specified by the range. The method components joined by string returns an NS string. The string is made up of the elements of the array and separated by some string that you provide. Let's now look at NS mutable array. The method add object adds an object to the array. The method replace object at index with object lets us replace an object in the array. The method replace objects in range with objects from array lets us take a small array and put it into a large array. The method exchange object at index with object at index lets us swap two objects with each other. So there are quite a few methods that you can use when working with NS arrays and NS mutable arrays. Let's go back to Xcode. What we want to do is to create a chessboard. Let's start by creating the first row. Paste some code. As you can see, we are using the array with objects method. And the objects in our case will be strings. Each string representing a chess piece. We will use WR for the white rook, WH for the white horse or white knight as it is also called, WB for white bishop, WQ for white queen, WK for white king, and then we have bishop, horse, rook once again. So here is a representation of the first row. Let's log it. Log percentage at first row. Let's build and run. And here are the elements in the array. Now we would rather have them horizontally instead of vertically. Stop. Go back. Instead of first row, let us use first row components joined by string and let's take the vertical bar as the separator and see if this looks anything better. Build and run. Yes, white rook, white horse, white bishop and so on. Stop. Let's build the second row, paste some code. We will use WP to represent a white pawn. Let's copy 
and log this row as well. Change to second row. Build and run. And there we have it. Pawns in front of the heavy pieces. Stop. Let's do the same thing for the black pieces. Paste some code. Here is the 7th row and here is the 8th row. And as you can see, we are using the letter B to represent the black pieces. For instance, BR is the black rook. Now we want to make the chessboard. Let's begin by declaring the chessboard in the interface file. This time we will use NS Mutable Array. Because we want to be able to move the pieces while the program is running. Let's go back to the implementation and paste some code. Here we are creating an empty NS mutable array. And here we are filling it with string objects consisting of two empty spaces. Let's now fill our chessboard with chess pieces. Paste some code. We are using the replace objects in range with objects from array method to replace objects in the chessboard. We are replacing with objects from the first row array and we are starting at location 0 and replacing 8 elements. The same with the second row from element 8 and replacing 8 elements. And similarly for the 7th row and for the 8th row. Then we want to print our chessboard and we are doing it with the method called print board. Let's paste the code of that method. Here is our old friend components joined by string. We are printing one row at a time. And here is just some embellishment to make it look tidier. Now we can take away the scaffolding we were using earlier. Let's build and run. And here is our chessboard with the pieces nicely arranged. Let's now try to move this pawn from position 12 to position 28. So what we actually want to do is to exchange the elements 12 and 28 with each other. Let's go back and do that. First a comment, move pawn, chessboard Exchange object at index 12 with object at index 28. And make a new print, self print board. Let's build and run. And here is the result. Here is the board when the game begins 
and here is the board when the pawn is moved. Thanks for watching.